All right, welcome back to another session. I think where we last left off, we were just implementing the on-click functionality when we press the button. So, like for example, when you press the start game, it should load the next scene using um, one of our or using this script. And essentially, what the script does is that. Essentially what, this, oops. essentially what this script does is that it takes the current index using this method and this class and taking the property from the build index which we can uh, edit in our properties, our build settings and then so here's the build index we said that the start menu is zero core game is going to be at the first index and the windscreen will be on the second index so then what this is doing is that first it's getting a scene which I guess returns a scene type and then it gets the index based on the build settings so in our case when we click on this button right here start game it goes to the build settings and sees what the index or first it gets the scene which is start menu um, and then it in the build index um, this gets returned and now and then after that we load a new scene but we would, uh, it takes in a parameter of an integer and I guess it's also based on the the build index so when we do current index plus one it goes uh, it increments the um, the next value of current index, current scene index, which will then when the next time I mean, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, so the load it'll load the scene of the next index. So I guess it's referring to the build settings. So we had zero right here. We increment it to one. So we load scene with the index of one, which in our case would be the core game so when we run this and press start it goes to the next scene alright so I guess I'm gonna continue from here um, because I, uh, for our core game we're definitely gonna need to uh, create a custom script for the number generating here So it looks like we're going to learn how to load all the scenes.
All right, so we got a new challenge. We got, we have to essentially load, be able to load all the screens now. And in our case, the one that um, goes to the next screen for here would be this screen button. And then one screen, it'd be this button again. And um, I guess I should also try to see if I can do this because technically we did learn that in the in the previous game where we had to alt uh, to set the text. Um, all right, so let's just begin. So we had to create a a scene loader, right? A scene loader object, and luckily for us, we can just reuse the same script that they had and just apply the apply that function into our onClick method for the green button. So first we're going to create an empty object called scene loader. And I'm just doing this instead of copying so I can learn it. We're going to add a component and add this script. And then we're going to go to our button, our correct button. And then in our onClick, we're going to add and then we're going to drag this uh, scene loader Oh, I didn't change it. We're going to drag this object into our on click. So we're going to drag it here. Now we're access, we can now access all of its uh, methods, in, in which case the one we're interested in is this one the load next scene. And essentially, we're just going to do that again in our windscreen. Save it. Create an object on the scene loader. Add component script. And then here I'm not sure if um, I think this one's going to be different. Even though we are placing the same object um, I feel like we're going to have to create a, our own method. So we're going to have to do something like public forward restart game or something. In which case the um, int or scene loader dot load scene to zero. Zero being the first uh, screen or the first scene, the intro scene. And I think that would be what we'd apply. So that would be here or a button, and then add an on click and then scene loader, and then huh. public void restart. Hmm, I wonder why it doesn't show it. Oh, we are there. Scene loader does not contain a, a, a definition of load scene. Oh. oh, scene manager, my bad. So I guess if it's not showing up, then there's something wrong and we should always check the console for any errors. So we start game. And so let's go try this out. Save. Start game. Yes. I am the greatest number wizard, dare challenge me again. And then, so we did that. So I will try to, I guess, create the script for the core game. I mean, we kind of already had it. If we look at our. Um, oh, it's fine. So let's see. I think we have to create a script here. It says alter text. Um, and then we're going to use Text Mesh Pro and then set the text based on the the value hmm. huh. I guess this would be a good challenge so let, let's give it a go new script we're gonna call it um, for now I'll just say generate number And then we're gonna. Uh, it might be an asset, isn't it? 
I put this in scripts. And then we're going to call this. Hmm. Let me take a look at the previous project just to see what they did because I kind of forgot. Um, projects. Text based game. Assets. Scripts. So you have a text component and a starting state. They didn't use text pro though. And I think that's fine. I don't think I used um, the text pro version. We just, I just used the regular one too. Um, so we just got to update the thing. This is the one we need. So we'll have something like this where we get a text. Um, but we it shouldn't be serializable because, well, we're not really entering. It has to be randomly or it has to be generated dynamically, right? The text component dot text equals current state dot get state stored, which is for state class. And then we have it. So we do need a start and an update where it says manage state. Alright. So in the beginning, we're going to create a public variable called text. And this will be the text field I guess and then text field um, dot set text right dot set text oh uh, dot text equals I wonder how you is there a way to convert an integer to a string in, in C sharp uh, C sharp Integer empty string. Message for our val to string. Oh, you just the, the reference to string. Alright. So we gotta get the. Um, I guess for now, 1000. We're gonna hard code it. Or unless we can maybe do it through code like uh, private private int um, max num is 1000 and then we get this to max num dot to string so you know we could also check the C script the C uh, C sharp script for the our first game. The number was it. The actual number was it. So let's go take a look. Um, so we got an int, uh, we got a max, a min, the current guest, and the number found, which is a boolean. Um, so let's do that. Private int minimum equals one. Private int current guess. Or in his, he didn't. He had it um, where it, if it restarted, then we would have to set the, the max and the begin. All right, and maybe these shouldn't be private, or we should create a getter and setter methods. Um, we might, you know, let's let's just do that. Public void, just to get into the habit of like good programming. I guess get um, max num return this dot max num. Oops. And then get it. Is it maximum or minimum? I wonder. I think it's set, isn't it?
and the current gas, I don't think we do anything with that, right? Other than change it. Current gas is going to be the uh, min or max plus min divided by 2. So it's always going to guess maximum to string. Um, I think to increase the accuracy, maybe, because the number should, or I guess it's a rare occasion that the guess number is the max. So I'd like to just, I guess, um, make it more believable that we're at least trying. I don't know if this works though, but essentially we're just picking the middle of the number because then we might be getting close to what the user actually might choose. All right. So then um, for an update, can, I can modularize it and then put it in a different method. But for now, I think I'm just going to write it here. So um, if the if the current guess number right wait wait wait, wait no, no, no that's not it I think um, yeah she has all of this out soon um, we're, we're gonna be pressing buttons right so we need to alter it based on the button press so doing it like this might not be what I thought. What I think. All right, hold up. So if I have a non-script click like here, now my button's higher or button lower. Oh, I, I think I got it. I think I got it. Um, void button higher. So that's uh, if they pressed. Um, if that, that's if they if the button for uh, the top button was pressed, and then the white button lower would be when they pressed the lower button. So um, text field current. Guess equals max num divided by two, and then current guess the string. I should probably have named it. Like guess a number from one to one thousand. So maybe in the beginning, hold up. Gotcha. I can guess what it is. Choose one to one thousand. Unless we can edit the text to be more dynamic and then just have the user choose it or something. But I guess for now it should be fine. Um, then we go back to the core gameplay. Uh, Go back to scripts. Now let's include some functionality. Um, so we want the to wait for the button press. So I know this is this update method does get called like every time. So it's I consider it like a while loop. Um, get key code down. I guess that's the thing. I don't know if the button's been pressed or not. We have to listen. So here, these are listeners, right? So they're listening for certain pushes of the key code. And I guess we haven't really learned like how to listen for certain button clicks so even like if I press um, no my number is higher and I implement the the script here to generate number or if I press button higher 
it will generate a number. I guess it wouldn't work. Alright, I guess I'll probably just continue on with the tutorial. But at least we got like an idea of how to do it. So it'll probably be easier when they say something about it. I keep hearing the word prefab. I wonder what that is. Let's go quickly check it out. Prefab Unity. Unity's prefab system allows you to create, configure, and store a game object complete with all its components, property values, and child game objects as reusable assets. Prefab asset acts as a template from which you can create new prefab ins instances in the scene. So how I see it is that essentially it's a like a class that's that can be used that can be reused throughout multiple projects. So uh, yeah, that'd be pretty cool you know, to create one prefab and then being able to use it in other projects can really make the the development time. Um, shorter. So I guess in our case, it would have been able to just copy the scene loader and then use that app for all the other three, or all the other two. Gotta reset the transfer. I bet. Wonder why though.
Oh, we're still not working on the code. I guess we should also include uh, another text here that says that we're going to try to read between 1 to 1,000, just as a reminder. Um, so we're going to include in the canvas a new text mesh pro. Um, to kind of speed up the process, I'm actually going to just copy this, but move it towards here and make sure this is out of make sure it's on the canvas, change this to um, reminder range. So we're gonna say choose a number between 1 to 1000 and we're also gonna increase the triangle Hold shift to W choose the font Lock this up, choose the font. Um, where's the font? Fonts right here. That's kind of weird. I wonder why I can't try it. Alright, so now we essentially loaded it up. Let's actually center it and then change the tool again to it. That's good. We're going to anchor it to the top center. Then just kind of move it up a bit and move it to the right a bit. And then um, I guess we can also create a border. Or we can actually just see if we can change it to like yellow. Choose a, choose a number. I'm going to end it here for the day, but let me just double check on stuff. So there's, yeah, a lot of errors. Um, so it has something to do with this. Um, what does it say? It says name or, oh, we had to do a using name space. Um, UI. So using community engine by UI. That should Hint does not contain a definition. Wait, what? But then it says here that's in val val to oh I keep forgetting that we're in C sharp. So that should solve it. Yep. Alright. Let's just see how it looks. Even though we didn't really do anything, but I guess. I just wanted to see this. Maybe I should have made them all like the same font, but maybe next time. Alright, I think I'm gonna end it here now.